going to go take a look at the uh, the Dragger mining safety capsule. Uh, holds miners in states of emergency, that kind of thing. So we're going to go take a look. So you can see also if you look through the window. I don't know if that's going to... Oh, there we go. So okay. that light's showing you that this door is also open and there's one on the inside chamber as well. Okay. The intention of the handle is to make sure that it's turned until it stops turning. Okay. Uh, that way you're ensure, ensuring the seal on the door. Okay. So, again, uh, we get here, you'd have a cord off here for the mine air supply. Um, you see that there's, there's something wrong. Uh, there's either power or air loss to the system. Okay. You know, it's not being used. It's not well, since there's no air hooked up, I would assume that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we don't have. Is there any kind of when you close the handle? Is there any indication that it's closed, or it's just when it stops? Is when there it a, stops. Okay. All when right. It stops. Yeah. So don't be worried about how hard it is. Just okay. Until it stops. Okay. Yeah. So open direction arrow on the door. Yep. So you see the inside door is closed. There's no lights on, so it is air. So we move in. If there were mine air present, the second door from the door, there's a switch. If mine air is present, a purge, air purge would automatically start. Okay. So you open the door, it's gonna go You're gonna hear the air start. It's gonna, and then it's gonna switch to this. It's gonna open up and switch, yeah. That's gonna flow air, trying to um, prevent any contamination from going in or minimize the contamination from going in. Okay. So you see there's two mufflers up here. This air system automatically activates uh, and it is going to uh, count down one minute once the door is closed. So they, there's like an airlock then, right? This is an airlock. Okay. So it's, uh, it's kind of semi-automated. Um, like I said, if air is present, when air isn't present, one, um, the bottles are not going to be open. You don't leave the bottles open uh, in a standby state. Uh, but also, it's a limited amount of air supply. So you don't want to waste that. You don't want the guy to open the door, it starts going, he starts talking to his friends, doesn't realize what's going on. Uh, they should, but in an emergency situation, you're not going to. So because the air supply is limited, we don't want to have it run automatically. Okay. Uh, we believe it's better if it would. Uh, however, um, you have to take uh, you have to make a decision on what you're going to do. Um, risk emptying the cylinders before any functional purge can occur, or limiting it to actual uh, manual operation. Okay. So we're we'll going to go ahead. Fire the light. Pretty fancy LED light, sir. So again, we're going to close this. This is our seal on the outside. You make sure again you turn it all the way until it stops. Okay. So in here, um, we don't have air. This is telling us we don't have air. Okay. So right away you walk in, this is flashing. You know we don't have air. So you open your air cylinders. And there's a monitor here. This is showing you the carbon monoxide levels. So if that level is up, you're going to purge. If the level's at zero, you're not going to purge. If it's uh, dusty or smoky in here, then you're going to purge. How do you purge? So Reset or start? To start. Okay. Start. There's a valve at the bottom. This valve opens to make sure the room doesn't become pressurized. It's a very small room. There's 2,000 liters per minute of air rushing through. Okay. So it's it's a preventative measure again. Uh, so there's going to be air circulating in here. You can stop it, so it's decent, you don't need to run it, you can stop it on your own. It's running, people are in a, a panic situation, and I just want to go through. We don't want to push contamination in, so once this door is open, it's going to stop on its own. Okay. If you don't interrupt it, or the door remains closed, it will time out in one minute just so it's not left to run indefinitely. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided on one minute, um, more or less arbitrarily. Uh, you'll never know what's going to happen in here. Right. You can continue to run it. It's just going to be physically starting it again. Right. 
Um, so again, it's it's a it's a mode of trying to maintain cylinders. Okay. Okay. The incoming air from the mine uh, has a three-stage filter on it. Um, so everything's filtered. There's a water separator outside, and these this pressure switch tells the system which air source to activate for the flushing. Okay. So it's all, there's no switches, no, not to make any decisions. Uh, oh, it does it automatically? It does it all on all of its own. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's about it in here. So we would proceed here again. It's just to, if you start opening the door and you look and this is on, it's just an indicator to tell you that the back door behind you is still open. Okay. One thing to mention is the instructions on the wall. Yes. We've been through them quite a couple of, a number of times. Uh, we've had the mine customer himself uh, go through. Follow that. The, that's intended to follow. You just come in. If you're not sure what to do, you just follow the instructions. Um, it gives you a couple of different decisions, whether you have uh, the flashing lights on or off and what to do in each case. And then again, your monitor above or below 100 ppm. Okay. And that's managed where? The 100 ppm? The 100 ppm is this monitor. It's okay, this right. Tight. So it would be alarming if the okay. level was up. Um, it'll alarm at uh, 35 ppm to say the level's rising. Okay. Um, I believe the Ontario standard for workplace is 25 ppm okay. is a limit. However, this is an emergency uh, uh, survival system. Mm -hmm. 100 ppm is, is, is safe. Um, not for extended periods of time. Okay. Um, so this is a, a monitor alarm just to tell you what's going on, give you an indication of what's happening. And uh, with a small volume here, if you had less than 100 ppm uh, going through into the main chamber would be okay. It's going to dilute itself down. Okay, and um, this gives you, set, what, 72 hours? This one uh, is 16 persons, 24 hours. Okay. So again, as you can Now, if you have less people, is it longer? Less people would uh, run longer because you're uh, not going to be taxing the air conditioning or heating system mm -hmm. uh, as much as 16 people would. So you will last longer, yes. Uh, again, this is a three-stage filter system from, from the mine air, mm -hmm. uh, which comes through silencers, so it doesn't deafen people. Uh, we put 1,200 liters a minute through here. Um, that creates a positive pressure in here, approximately 400 pascals. Um, you can see the front door is closed. You and I in here are generating heat. Mm -hmm. uh, each person puts off about 100 watts. Um, so we're actually building pressure in here uh, just by being in here breathing and our uh, metabolic heat generation. Okay. So we're about 100 pascals right now, just as we idly stand here. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, is there a safety limit on the number of pascals, or is it just a reference? Or uh, That is reference. That's information. Um, you can see it dropped out to zero. We yeah, you open, open the door. door. Yeah. Uh, what we have is pressure relief valves over here. At full airflow from the mine system, these valves will all be open and purging constantly. Uh, that will hold your pressure to a maximum, and we don't want it to go over 500. Um, that's going to hold it about 400 pascals. And that's relieving 100%. If you lose your mine air and you're using our soda lime scrubbing, that's what this is. So it's not both, it's one or the other. You have mine air, you turn it on, you sit down, you're good, turn on the air conditioning, you're okay. If you don't have air, then this is soda lime scrubbing. We have oxygen cylinders, which aren't here at the moment, but we have oxygen cylinders to replenish the oxygen, oxygen that we generate, mm -hmm. or that we, that we consume, and the CO2 that we generate uh, is absorbed through the soda lime system here. Okay. So again, it's an either or. Generated from the tanks? Uh, this, these are just uh, oxygen cylinders on their own, so you just regulate down to the number of people you have. Okay. We have breathing air cylinders over here, but they are only to maintain positive pressure. Okay. So this system uh, controls the cylinders and works to keep 200 pascals in here. So if you don't have your mine air, you're not purging 100% and relieving, 
then at 200 pascals, this opens and closes valves to maintain 200 pascals. Air if you're cooling, <laughs> you're going to uh, condense the air in here and you're mm -hmm. going to drop pressure. So these will compensate for that. If you're heating, it's going to build pressure and it's going to relieve and this is not going to operate. Okay. So we have communication systems in here, mm -hmm. uh, radio and telephone. This is provided by our customer. We don't provide these. Okay. They, they wanted them in here. We said, look, we, we want to control this uh, system 100%. If anything needs to be penetrated through the wall or you want anything installed, let us know because I want to test it 100% at my shop. I don't want them doing something at their location and then I have to come and test it or give them instructions to test it. So mm -hmm. they provided us with the communication systems they wanted and we put them in for them. Um, below is our electrical cabinet. This is our uh, standard product from Germany, uh, the soap I'm scrubbing. Um, these are also a standard product for us. And we have a triple gas monitor in the back. So as the system operates, you'd monitor your quality of, of air inside the chamber with the three gas monitor, uh, watching your oxygen, your carbon monoxide, and your carbon Where monoxide. Where is that over here in the corner? Yeah, that's your black monitor there on that tractor. Special guest appearance by Axel. There you go. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it, or? Uh, basically, beyond the technical aspects of uh, how our electrical system is connected and, and all of those things, uh, mm -hmm. as an operation, uh, that, that's, that's it. Okay. So um, this stays in here, the manual? Uh, the manual would be in here. We provide one for every shelter and uh, any additional copies of customers. Where's the oxy board or uh, Scrabble or anything like that? Uh, that would be up to them to provide <laughs> that. We, uh, we don't provide those things. So. Would it be worthwhile mentioning that, uh, for example, we design and produce our own consumables. So okay. we are not dependent on third party suppliers. Mm -hmm. For the sewer line. For the sewer line, right. Right, okay. So I think... Uh, and all the gas monitor is all our right. own as well. So we'll you try and keep as much in house as possible. Well, this is our core competence. Yeah. Okay. So this is why we in, in Lübeck the the solar alarm is being produced. Okay. Not just for these shelters, for BG4, for closed circuit breathing apparatus, for diving application, as well as for submarine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And for medical, I mean, all those um, breathing machines that uh, absorb the CO2, that's mm -hmm. all being produced by by Draga, by oh. ourselves. Oh, okay. That is good to mention. It's raining pretty good out there now. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially because, you know, uh, if, if a customer decides to go for, for such a system and they need to rely on those consumables and we need to make sure, obviously, that we supply them on short notice when, when they are being needed. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's a challenge for us, but on the other hand, we are not that much depending. Right, on at least you're in control, right? right. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to pull the cover up uh, yeah. past the very back of the unit. Kevin was struggling to get up here. Do you have a or something? Kevin was supposed to do something. Is there, a, is there an exit procedure? Is there an exit procedure? Mm -hmm. uh, that's dependent on the mines okay. process. Okay. Um, I believe that once people are in here and they communicate, uh, they have to stay here until they are uh, somebody comes to relieve them. Okay. Or basically rescue them, let them out. Uh, is there any procedure in this unit for leaving? Like, do you have to? You don't have to. You just open the door and you're out. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's no. There's no danger in anything beyond the operating procedures in the mine. Okay. Um, if this is pressurized, it's not enough pressure to cause a door to okay. uh, open quickly. Mm -hmm. Even if uh, it did, for some unknown reason, um, generate a pressure. Uh, one, it would never be enough to the door open. Uh, mm -hmm. We have relief valves everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, so there's no way you're going to generate a high pressure. But even if somehow everything failed and somebody, I don't know, blocked all the relief valves, once you open the door, this mechanism um, pulls the door tight on the eight points to seal against the gasket. Mm -hmm. You're going to release the seal long before the door could ever open. Okay. So the seal is released probably halfway through the mechanism. Okay. But all these are still holding the door closed. Right. And then you hear it. Oh, yeah. 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 Great. Let you so cover it up. No, uh, no specific uh, 
exit instructions, but my understanding is from the mine's procedures, once this is employed, they have to stay here until the crew comes to relieve them. Okay. There's, there's no choice. Okay. Good. Thank you. Here's our electrical compartments. Clearly the big extension cord won't be there. A lot of batteries. But uh, this is our small set. Um, each one of those batteries is approximately 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. 215 amp hour at 12 volts. Uh, we run them uh, together to have a total of 24 volts. Um, 860 amp hours total to run the air conditioner. So again, everything that you see uh, attached to this thing is, is what we've done uh, in our shop in Kingston. All of it. Great. And that's just a mean. Yep. Well, we in this case the customer required a transformer, so we put a transformer in line. Mm -hmm. So the main disconnect uh, is there for the 600 volt power source. Mm -hmm. and this disconnects everything within our system. Mm -hmm. So this is our sort of our power distribution panel. Mm -hmm. And then also on the inside we have. Uh, What's this guy? This guy. That that's the uh, outdoor unit of the air conditioning. System. Oh, okay. So this is a, it's a heat pump, mm -hmm. not, uh, not just a, not an air conditioner. Okay. Good. Excellent. What we try to do even for the batteries and the maintenance, you know, we made up yeah, this, uh, this chart here, which just trying to illustrate, you know, if, if they have to disconnect it, if they have to service something, they know how to put it back together. materials that we chose to use, uh, how we manufactured the unit specifically, um, the redundancies that we've built in, um, like a simple thing like the uh, the doors that we chose to use. Um, competitor marine grade. They're, they're a ship's door. Yeah. Um, they're a marine door. Uh, others have used things like uh, uh, freezer doors. Okay. Not sure how they get the seal. Um, we control the uh, inner chamber uh, it, it's, we leak test it, it's uh, controlled with positive pressure, uh, the relief valving that we have both in and out, uh, I think those are the big things. Okay. Uh, the redundancies are, are a methodology that, that came from, from Germany with their experience in these things. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know. The doors. Yeah. 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 I think the redundancy is a big thing. Uh, as I was saying, it's, uh, we claim uh, we've, we've put in double redundancy. But in reality, it's, it's, there's four levels of safety there. One being the, the mine power and air. Mm -hmm. uh, two being they back up their systems. Mm -hmm. They all do. And then uh, we have our backup system and our backup to our backup. So it ends up being four four levels there, which, which I think is, is good. But again, it's, uh, the way we've gone about it is, is, is our belief that this is a life-saving device. Yeah. It needs to be dealt with that way, not not just considered as, uh, well, we'll build a little, a little shack and we'll stick a freezer door on it and yeah. we'll worry about it later. We control the environment, we control the pressure, uh, and that's, that's I think, one of the, one of the big differ differentiators for us.